All right, guys, welcome back. Here we are coming in hot off the uh, recent ranking of every Merciful Fate album. Very fun stuff. And if you caught that, you saw what the next album we'd be covering is, you know, just the quick, like, in between the the kind of transition in between those bigger discographies that I do. And that is, of course, Heaven and Hell's The Devil You Know. Very wild album cover. I love how they have, like, the uh, that Black Sabbath logo right there. Um, very, very cool album art and just kind of a dark, dark theme overall on this album. The, the cover really, really reflects that. Um, of course, you know, this came out in 2009 and, you know, I, as I've said before, I didn't end up including this in like the Black Sabbath rankings because technically, even though it's, it's Black Sabbath, right? It, they went by heaven and hell. Now I totally get when people do include it in theirs, but I just didn't. Um, and this would sadly be Ronnie James Dio's last album, not only with the band, but, uh, just, you know, in general after, you know, he ended up dying of cancer, um, I think not too many, not too long after this. Um, but the lineup here is the lineup from, uh, from Mob Rules. So, you know, you got Ronnie James Dio, Tony Iommi, Geezer Butler, and Vinny Apiece. So, Great, great lineup. Love that Mob Rules lineup. Um, I like the Mob Rules lineup even more than uh, than the... Um, well, I think this would be the Dehumanizer lineup too as well, actually. Um, but yeah, I like that Mob Rules Dehumanizer lineup better than even the Heaven and Hell lineup because I like Vinny Apiece better as a drummer than Bill Ward. But anyways, yeah. Let's hop right into this thing with a perfect, perfect... Uh, tone setter for this album with the opening track atom and evil very cool song title for one it's got some very cool lyrics very doomy and gloomy man the production on this thing is just it it, it really reminds me of like a uh, black sabbath 13 album this is kind of like the 13 for the dio era right uh, that big return and everything um they're very similarly produced and have some similar um, similar songs, uh, or like songwriting, um, elements in there, which of course, I mean, it's Black Sabbath, right? But, you know, the, the, of course there is that big difference though, in the way Ozzy and Dio kind of, uh, deliver their vocals and even, um, you know, several of these songs too kind of have a big difference in, in the songwriting styles. But this one in particular, this reminds me a lot of like, the first Black Sabbath, you know, the self-titled song off the self-titled album, right? Um, just kind of the way the doomy uh, and really, really heavy riff uh, is on this one. And I just love, love, love Geezer Butler's bass tone on here, man. It is sick. It is thick. It has just got such a badass prominence on here, much like the 13 album. Then we go with Easily, my favorite off here. Fear. Come on, man. That riff is too good. Tony Iommi knows how to whip these riffs out like nobody's business. And he does just that here um, with Fear. This is just one of the hookiest freaking riffs. And it's just got such a good grit, uh, such a good uh, groove to it. And, you know, you got Vinny Apice just banging on the drums back there, kind of grooving along with it. Very, very cool. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll mention, you know, Ronnie's vocals on here are absolutely fantastic of course even at being you know so late in his career and so close to his death um you know he was just nailing it here man he just had such a golden voice you know but um fear is it's got to be my favorite off here for sure then track number three we go with bible black this is kind of like the uh the heaven and hell type, you know song um, off that album, or really even more akin to something like Falling Off the Edge of the World or Sign of the Southern Cross. It kind of has that kind of slow, um, you know, acoustic little intro and build going on. Then it just, bam, hits you like a freaking truck, man, and it just kicks off, making this one also one of my favorites off here, like easily in like the top, top three or four. Bible Black is a great, great, great one. Highly recommend. Let me go on with Double the Pain. And, you you know, talking about Geezer Butler's bass tone again. It's, it, you know, it, it starts off with kind of this weird kind of twisted, demented sounding bass tone. And then he layers over that 
with more of a clean base tone, but it's still that dark, dark, uh, and dark and deep tone to it. And then, you know, of course, Ami just climbs on top of that with his, uh, with that same riff on guitar and Double the Pain, another absolute favorite off here for me. I, I am a big fan of this one. Um, I, I love the, uh, the chorus is really, really hooky on this one. And Double Pain is just like, that's gotta be like really fear Bible Black and Double the Pain are like, might just be the top three for me. Um, then we go with Rock and Roll Angel. This is when I forgot how good it was. And the solo, I'll give this one the award for the best uh, solo, guitar solo, during uh, during that kind of the middle of the song here. Just Tony tears it up, man. Um, very powerful, a lot of emotion going into this solo. Um, fantastic song that, you know, again, it's one that I kind of forgot about uh, how good it was. Then we got the Turn of the Screw. This one's got a pretty solid riff and everything, but I would say this one's kind of uh, one of my least favorites off here. Not quite my least favorite, um, but it, I mean, it does definitely kind of rank in that lower uh, echelon of things, you know, kind of just kind of down there, but not a bad song at all. I don't really think there's any bad songs off here, honestly, but uh, you know, if I had to kind of place that one, I'd place it a little bit lower down the line, but the riff is very good on it. Then we go with track number seven, Eating the Cannibals. Very cool title yet again. Um, and kind of uh, very clever lyrics in here. Um, one of the, this one's up there for me as just a badass tune and being one of the, one of those top tier ones for me. I, I really like um, Ronnie's vocals on this track and just the delivery of it all. Very, very cool. Then we go with um, track number eight, Follow the Tears. This one might be my least favorite off here. Um, not, it, it just doesn't do quite what a lot of these other ones do. But again, it's 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 not a bad song. Like, put it on and I'm jamming to it for sure. But it just, it, when, when you got a great album like this, and you're kind of thinking of like, which ones that I probably put on least, um, if I'm just picking, you know, from it, it's probably going to be Follow the Tears for me. But, it is good. I like the riff on it. Um, then we go with the second last one here, track number nine, Neverwhere. Another one that I uh, forgot forgot about. Um, very good one, but also kind of near that bottom, kind of that bottom three here. The Turn of the Screw, Follow the Tears, and Neverwhere are kind of those bottom three for me. But uh, a good song nonetheless. And we close it off with an amazing one, right? Uh Track number 10 here, Breaking Into Heaven. What an epic. And I love the groove of this one, right? This one, it reminds me um, kind of like Virtual Death off of a Black Sabbath's, uh, um, God, I'm, I'm about to call it Cross of Thorns. I'm drawing an absolute blank on it. Uh, the one with Tony Martin that's got the angel on it. Gosh, that, and I love that album too. Y'all know that's one of my favorite, but I'm like, absolutely drawing a blank on that for some reason right now. Um, but that, that, uh, it reminds me of virtual death kind of with the way the bass and guitar, uh, licks are. And of course, you know, whenever I, I'm sure as soon as we end this video, yeah, I'm going to end up remembering the name of that album cross purposes there. Got it. I, I just, I wanted to call it cross of thorns because the song on there cross of thorns, but anyways, yeah, reminds me of, uh, of uh, virtual death off of um, cross purposes. Very, very cool. Very epic and a and just a, a very you know kind of sad moment when you get to the end of this album, knowing that hey, here's the last one he did, you know, with Ronnie. But vocally, he absolutely slays on this song. Everybody brought their A game on this whole album as a whole. Um, Breaking in the Heaven is probably like in my top five off of here. Like very, very good one. Perfect way to close out the album. Um, but yeah, guys, this one, uh, if I had to say like of the four Dio or of the three Dio Black Sabbath albums, and then if, the, if I were to include this in here, I would say it's my least favorite of the Dio era Black Sabbath albums. Um, but again, you, look what you're looking at. You're looking at four just absolute stellar albums um i don't think this one's quite as like iconic and quite as stand out as 
Heaven and Hell, Mob Rules, Dehumanizer. But um, it, it's a great, great album for sure. And, uh, and I'm very glad we got it. Got this last, you know, reunion album before Ronnie, Ronnie James Dio's death. So fantastic stuff. I want to hear your guys' thoughts on this thing. I know you, I heard some of you guys talk about it a while ago when we talked about, um, when we were reviewing and ranking the Black Sabbath stuff. Some of you guys, um, again, understandably included, included it in your ranking. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not really sure. I'd have to really think and that'd be a whole other deal trying to fit this in the ranking for me. But, um, it definitely is my least favorite of the Dio era Black Sabbath, um, Black Sabbath material, if you were to stick it in there with that. So, um, with all that being said, though, guys, we are going to talk about the next band we're going to be covering, and it's going to be kind of a, we're divvying off a little bit here from, from the metal for a minute while we cover this band. It is going to be a great synth pop band that would, you know, because we've not really covered any, like, synth pop kind of stuff like that in a while I, I mean i i've done it before of course like mr mister and stuff like that but we're gonna be looking at one of my favorite synth pop bands from the 80s the fix and they've got a pretty pretty built up discography so um it, it'll be fun revisiting some of these especially the, kind of like the later albums of theirs um hell they had an album what last year i think um but really almost two years ago now but um yeah that came out so they have a pretty big and storied discography, um, and it'll be really fun to check through there. They're one of those bands that, you know, people probably have heard a couple hits from if you're not really into them, but when you really dig into them, guys, I'm telling you, there is some killer, killer deep cuts on there, so stay tuned for that. Next time when we hop in and uh, cover that first Fix album, Shuttered Room, so very excited to kind of do something a little bit, uh, cover band a little bit different than what we've been doing uh, lately. Like to shake it up a little bit sometimes. So stay tuned for that, guys. That is right. We're going to be uh, re ranking and reviewing the Fix albums. So like, subscribe, and comment. And thanks for watching, guys.